In section 5.1, we learned the basic rules and definitions of probability, then the difference between classical and empirical probability. In section 5.2, we want to expand on these themes and talk about the addition rule and complements. So before we get into either of those things, we need to spend a time with the definition of disjoint. So disjoint, also known as mutually exclusive, is when you have two events or more events that have no outcome in common, no outcomes in common. So I have here some pictures so you can see. These are Venn diagrams. They're kind of like circle graphs. So over here, when you're tossing a coin, you either have heads or you have tails. Those are disjoint. You cannot toss a coin and have it be both at the same time. Okay. Whereas not disjoint or not mutually exclusive. So I guess I could call this, um, so this is joint, disjoint or mutually exclusive. That's the other term for it. Okay. Once you know you have heads, then you automatically do not have tails. Once you know you have tails, then you automatically do not have heads. That's what it means. All right, what about not being disjoint? That, I was just petting my dog, so it made me think of this. So we have dog households over here. We have cat households over here, but we know that there's that very rare mix in between that has both dog and cats, and they would be in the overlap. So that's not disjoint, because you can have somebody that has dogs and cats in their house. And just to add to our definition, we would say not um, not mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive. If I know, if you know that I have a dog in my house, it doesn't mean that automatically you know I don't have a cat, okay? And vice versa, if you know I have a cat, it doesn't mean that I don't have a dog. Okay. All right, so let's look at these. You're gonna roll a six-sided die once, and you wanna determine whether or not um, rolling a four and rolling a six are mutually exclusive. And they are. If you roll as four, then it's automatically not a six. You can't roll both a four and a six at the same time when you're rolling one time. All right, what about two and an even number? Well, that would not be disjoint because if you roll a two, it is possible that it's even, well, it's definitely an even number. If you roll an even number, it's possible that it's a two. So those are not disjoint. All right, what about drawing a card from a deck? If you draw an a queen or a nine. So if you draw a queen, then it's automatically not a nine. It can't be. So that would be disjoint for sure. Yep. All right, then what about drawing a queen and a heart? Well, again, that's not disjoint because if you draw a queen, it is possible that you have drawn the queen of hearts, right? So that would be not disjoint. There we go. Sarah is a member of the debate team, and Sarah is the president of the theater club. Okay, so let me go back here to the queen and hearts real quick. So it is possible, right, because, uh, because it is possible to be both a queen and a heart, right? That's why it's not disjoint. So your question here is, can Sarah be a member of the debate team and be the president of the theater club? Well, that's not disjoint because Sarah could be both at the same time. All right, now we have a sample of 75 books is selected from a library. A is at least one of the 10, excuse me, at least 10 of the authors are female, and B is at least 10 of the books are fiction. Well, again, that's not really disjoint because you could be, um, you could have the 10 books come from female authors and be fiction books, right? Because the books, you know, could be both um, written by females and fiction. That's possible, right? So that would not be disjoint either. Okay. All right, so now that we have that kind of definition down, that's going to help us here with the addition rule for disjoint events. If you have two events that are disjoint, 
um, or mutually exclusive, I guess I should say, um, then the probability of E or F is equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F. So let's look here. The following table shows the number of graduates from Jackson College from spring 2010 to winter 2011 by degree. What is the probability of randomly selecting a JC 2010 to 2011 graduate who obtained an associate's degree of any kind? Now keep in mind, there are four different associate's degrees. I'll highlight them for you. So those four are the four associate's degrees. So if you're going to get an associate's degree of any kind, it's one of those four. But they're mutually exclusive. If you have an associate in arts, you don't have one in applied science. If you have one in applied science, you don't have it in general studies and so on. So to find the probability of getting an associate's degree, you would just use this rule and add up. So let me type that up one second. So the way I see that, that's the probability of AA, Associate in Arts, plus the probability of AAS, plus the probability of AGS, plus the probability of AS. So it's either AA or AAS or AGS or AS. So you want to find the probability of each one of those and add them up. So let me find that. There we go. And so then I would add each of them. This part here right here is the rule from up above, right? So I'll kind of highlight it in gray. So this is this rule that I'm applying. I'm just doing it for a whole bunch of degrees instead of just two. And then I find all the numbers from the table and I just add them up. And I will get 0.6482 to be my final result. And there we have it, all boxed up and ready to go. All right, now we're going to look at something called a two-way table. This is um, also known as a contingency table. So it's two-way because you have two directions. You have the columns right here, which are those different degrees and certificates and such. And then you have this rows right here, which are the genders. So you have two directions, rows and columns. And that's what makes it a two-way table. So the column variable is degree type. Degree type. It's mentioned right up here, degree type right there. See that? Let me highlight that. So that's where the degree type business comes from. And the row um, is the gender, right? Male, female, kind of obvious. And I'll highlight that in blue. Okay, and that's where these are coming from. All right, the cell for associate and general studies and female. AGS and female, that's 196. That's right here. Um, I'll put it in pink. So that's. 196. So you can see it. All right, find the prob excuse me, find the probability that a randomly selected JC graduate earned an AGS or an AS degree. All right, AGS. Well, to do this, I'm going to need to find all these totals down here along the bottom and across. So you start off by adding up these two numbers. So you take, let me make this so it fits with my calculator. There we go. All right, so let me clear this out. I want 529 plus 665. And then I'm going to do 1421 plus 2565, 189 plus 196, 283 plus 339, 116 plus 232. And even I can do the last one. So this one was 1194, 3986, 385, 622, 348, and 13. I can do that. All right, now to find the rows over here, you would add up this whole row right here. So I might as well find that. So 529 plus 141. That makes 2547 over here. And then do it again for the next row. Plus 2565. There we go, we get 4,001. That gives us a grand total of 6,548 for the grand total at the bottom, right? All right, so now when they want us to look at AGS and AS, that's the Associate in General Studies and the Associate in Science. So that's these two totals right down here. They have the numbers that I need. So I'm gonna highlight them. Oops, I better pick a color I haven't picked recently. How about we go with Sorry. There we go, green. So I want to add up those two numbers. So if I want the probability of AGS or AS, 
that would be the probability of AGS plus the probability of AS because they're mutually exclusive. And that is the probability of AGS would be, second, AGS would be 385 divided by the total of 6548, right? So let me bring that in. 385 over 6548 plus the probability of the other one, which is 622 over 6548, which would give me a grand total of, we need to add those two numbers, 385 plus 622 makes 1007 over 6548. And there you have it. And if they want a decimal, because I think they did, well, if they didn't actually state. So if they want a decimal, then you can do that by saying equals and then find what that number is with your calculator. So take 1007 and divide it by 6548 and you get 0 0.1538. Oops, and there we have it. And the next example is a little bit long, and I'm worried about getting it in the three minutes that I have left in this video. So I'm going to stop right here, and I'll pick it up in the next video with the two six-sided dice example. So I'll see you then.